gentlemen. Fire up. Ah, okay. I just saw the uh, thingy. Okay. I think we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Reservist podcast where Navy talks. My ta- uh, my name is Lieutenant Holbert, and I'll be your host for today. I am joined by my good friends and colleagues, uh, Lieutenant Hooch and Lieutenant Junior Monty. Hello. <laughs> Um, in this week's news, uh, 2.1.1 has been released to the PTU and is available for everyone to download. Tweaks and changes have been made to the Vanguard, uh, so it means it's much less manoeuvrable. However, this means it slides less, and I, I find it more controllable. Uh, the Vandal, Scythe, and Glaive have had health and speed buffs, and the PTU player cap has been increased from 16 players to 24, However, only 16 ships can still be spawned in to encourage more multi-crew ship flying. Hello everyone, how are we? Up, uh, fine, thank you. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a, no, what a blast. I'm pretty good. Yeah? I'm pretty good. A bit of an interesting... Uh... Evening, last. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 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 So, Things so what to did make you, you go? Hmm. So, what did you do during your evening to make it so interesting? Then, I'm interested. Oh, just what we've been doing now, just trying oh. to get. Him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It has been a very Head interesting. Call. Panic calls from your snowbound parents in Delaware to get their computer fixed. And, oh. Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, brilliant. That was interesting. Yeah. I did it from thousands of miles away. You fixed their computer from thousands of miles away. I'm impressed. I am very Indeed. impressed. Yeah. I'm just that good. Just that goddamn good. Pro level IT fixing. Hey, that's what they paid me for. <laughs> I have to sort around with the webcams here a minute. Everything is going a bit crazy right now. Yes. But um yes, tell me how has people's weeks been in terms of just gaming in general? Uh... Didn't do much gaming this week except for a little bit of Star Citizen, obviously. Um, messed around a couple times in uh, the universe, and then obviously downloaded two point one point one yesterday. Yeah. Messed around with my Vanguard. Messed around with a few other things. Seems more stable. Um, still having erratic temperature problems every now and then. It's not happening every time I go in as well. It's really strange. Hmm. Yeah. Is this the ship or the computer? The computer, yeah. Ah. Uh, no, my CPU fan's been weird. It says it isn't working when I start up the computer, go to the BIOS to try and fix it, and um, nothing. Just starts working. Gremlins. And I think you've got pictures mixed up here, uh, Curtis. Apparently, I'm 30 frames per second right now. <laughs> oh, God, it is. <laughs> Silky smooth. Yeah, I'm moving around! Oh, my God! Ow! I always knew Hooch was a console peasant. What? Him and his silky smooth 30 frames per Wash second. Wash your mouth out. <laughs> Wash your mouth out, console peasant. Remember, I might fly over to England and find you, so... Ah, uh, but remember, you won't be able to use your Second Amendment rights. I don't need a gun. Ah, <laughs> uh, but... Oh, yeah. they're not actually doing that. That was, I lived, I lived in... that was 12 months ago. It's I lived in somebody England for 23 years. 
Oh, you're moving. You're flying. I don't need a gun. <laughs> uh, I don't understand the need for guns. I mean, they're quite good. Nice. you just to make people learn. No. Oh, assignment work. Yeah. Had one this week. I had a few pages of that. Absolutely riveting stuff. Never mind. That's been and gone for now. Germany, Germany is probably one of the most delightful countries on the earth. Just going to put that out there. Wow. Now, that is not what I expected to hear. It, I expected to hear something about they bombed our chippy or something. Uh, no, my great aunt had a house bombed, but that's about it. She still hates yeah, the Germans. Yeah. I can't. They're too nice, frankly. Hell I lived here for them. years. Uh, I was there from two to three, I think. Father being in the military and all. can still remember it. They used to give you free food at the bakers and whatnot. <laughs> Lovely people. The beer, is, the beer is good. Also, German food is incredible. Gast house. Yeah. Gast house. Yeah. That's a pub. Basically a guest house. Would be the English translation. Most important phrase in Germany oh, that you'll ever need. Ein grosser Bier bitte. Nice pint of bitter, please. <laughs> I'm gross of beer, bitter. I think the stream is frozen. No. It's still running for me. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I was going to say something incredibly offensive and politically incorrect. What, 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 what stopped you normally, dude? Yeah, just conscientious. Yeah, that appears to be functioning again. Okay. Yes, the wonderful weapons mount maker. Fairly re reminiscent of an HK. Yeah, they um, took a, a few design prompts from that weapon. Mm. I was just going to say, I'd, I wish they'd go for something more along akin to Wolfenstein in their weapons design. Slightly different to K2. 
current weapons design in terms of their design prompts. Maybe more science fiction styled World War Two. World War Two. Well, yeah, it's just whenever they talk about their design, I don't know, prompts or for how combat takes place, yeah, it's always quoted as World War Two in space. I don't know. Hmm. Mm. Uh, yes. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Tell me. I had this exact same Explain reaction. Explain it to me like a earlier. child. Well, it's more of an insinuation than anything. Though a quarter a quarter of their yearly budget does magically disappear every year, so we can guess that's going on massive rail guns. <laughs> Dell ships. <laughs> I don't think I'd want I've... to go within sort of ten light years of one of those. I imagine they're fairly well defended. <laughs> I think I've already spotted one on the map. I've already found one. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention I'll mention it later. Yeah, because oh, it might it might be something useful. It's our little secret, but I think I've already found one or two that that kind of makes sense. If you if you read between the lines and you look at their placement and what's going on, it, it kind of makes sense. So this sounds like this sounds like just any kind of large arms manufacturer to me. This is this is more like British aerospace. So this is more like British aerospace. This is pretty much word for word. It could be defined as British aerospace or Raytheon. Or Boeing. Yeah, Boeing's in there as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah, basically Fisher the larger. <laughs> yes, weapons of mass destruction from them. <laughs> How us. have you not built a built a Toys R Us home production nuclear device before?
Gee, I wonder what that's going to fit on. Capable of tearing a destroyer apart like a tin can. I can't wait to that see that far. It looks like it is a gun. I think half the ship is quite literally a mass, re uh, mass driver. It's, um, yeah. I wouldn't want to be in that gun site. <laughs> yeah, the, um,. The Retribution has batteries of the big gun on the bottom of the Bengal. Yeah, it has turrets dedicated to carrying those things all over it, supposedly. I think it carries... Weirdly, I don't know why, but I think they're carrying them, from what I can sell from the pictures, along the side of the ship. So that could mean that fights in the game between capital ships end up uh, sort of Napoleonic-era style tactics. You form a big line of ships and then pummel each other to ship them come. Next up, I don't basically. believe it's in the hangar. It's next one. Yeah, this this next update coming, I think, the Starfarer and there was another one, um, Quartel. No, it's not Vandal, it's Zion. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just from I then what he? Oh, let's on. Um, I think Bering probably holds a very, very large market share because it does mention the fact that a majority of their business is with civilian products, mentioning that it, you find some kitchen appliances in every household. So I think they've taken CIG, that is, have taken some inspiration from things like the East India Company and are having companies which just take over areas of space or land as it would have been the case then and then all own almost exclusive rights to them uh, i think i think there's planets owned by companies pretty much and i i would be surprised if bearing wasn't one of these companies which owned planets somewhere so i think Um, I think a lot of the weapons, personnel weapons used, will be from Bering. Um, and I think the very big rail guns will be produced by rail, uh, Bering, but I don't think they produce that much in the way of military stuff. They seem to, according to the law anyway, be dedicated to certain things. Mm. They're not like Aegis Dynamics, for example, producing nothing but military equipment, or in Kruger's case, mostly making shields and weapons, but just producing a ship. Mm. So it would be interesting. Okay, I've read it. You've read <laughs> Good it. Good job. Yeah, okay. Um, you ever watch a series called Space Above and Beyond? 
No, I haven't, no. It was done by the same people who did the X-Files in the mid-90s. Well, it only lasted for about a season, two maybe? I can't remember. But they had a corporation in that. It was, it was, it was called Aerotech. This reminds me a lot of that. Mm. Um, I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. We, you won't directly hear about them in so much as manipulating things in Squadron 42, but they will be there. Mm. Behind the scenes. Um, yeah, yeah, the guns you carry will be made by bearing blah, 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 blah. But politically, it, it doesn't, you're not going to hear about them directly as, but they might have something to do with it. But think about the fact that in terms of Squadron 42, where we're going, war has just been announced publicly against the Vandal, hasn't it? Um, Admiral mm. Bishop has gone up and he said, right, that's it, we're not taking any of this shit anymore. We're, t- we're essentially taking the fight to the Vandal now. So think of how much profit this is going to give to companies like Bering, whose sole purpose is to supply weapons for the military. Um, because wars now have been announced, obviously companies are going to start manufacturing more ships, well, more weapons, body armor, ammunition, this kind of thing. So it's going to be such a massive profitable thing for this this company. Well, that's where I don't see Bering being quite so... not to the equivalent uh, lengths of some other companies because they do have a majority share in according to the article from what I could tell civilian markets mm. they're not uh, exclusively weapon manufacturers, they do have a very hefty but unofficially market. unofficially, they do make weapons for the military don't they um, well it's not so much unofficially it's just they don't announce it it's as probably wor- it's, as the article says it's probably one of the worst kept secrets in, in the verse um, yeah that they that they make weapons for the military, um, and I think that's mostly just to keep their image as a civilian manufacturer. Mm. They don't want to scare off their customers with being associated with me- weapons manufacture. Mm. Mm. But it it leads me to think, um, seeing as we are getting implemented soon into the game, um, which I believe maybe quite soon down the line is the whole uh, loot system and the whole fact that Chris Roberts has come out and said that very shortly we're going to be have the capability to blow up pirates take their loot and obviously go and ship it forwards and backwards now the fact that you're most likely going to be selling your scrap to companies um, such as Bering but possibly not Bering so I mean just companies in general um, you got to remember with a company that size bearing, you may not be dealing with bearing. You might be dealing with Bob's Salvage, which is owned by such and such corporation, which is owned by such and such corporation. It's the third party, which is owned thing. by yeah. bearing. Yeah, it may, it might, it might even be, not be third party. It might be fifteenth party. Yeah. This, this is this is what you call a, a multinational. It doesn't matter really what you do. You're probably going to be doing something with them at some point and not even know it. Mm. Mm. It's it's just an interesting read because in the article they've obviously gone into so much detail. But I guess what we've seen published in the article is what is most likely in the GDD or the game's design document. Um, Because when you make a company like this, you get the writers to go into such massive amounts of detail about companies and really flushing mm. out the law. So I've got a feeling that there's, obviously what we've got in the article is not only for the people who are currently updating Star Citizen's Wikia, um, which is a great place for law, by the way. Um, if you if you feel like catching up on law, I'd definitely recommend going on to the Star Citizen Wikia. Um, but hey, I look, think a protective seal. A protective seal. Um, but um, what was yes, I saying? Yes, the wiki does in fact uh, have a powerful seal to protect it. To protect it. But um, as I was saying, I 
I generally don't think that this article was published on accident. Sure, it is a law section, but I think the things that they posted and the things that yeah. were suggested in the article um, are things we need to look out for. I think verse. it's also the fact that I'm not sure whether they find it funny or whether they're trying to pro- uh, appeal to a more paranoid audience but they do like to throw out articles like the plain truth yes which reads like absolute garbage but uh, there are some people which like the idea of all corporations being big evil monsters out to kill everybody well, and clear truth essentially space hippie magazine isn't it it's mm. it's the whole kind of tree hugging thing which is oh all corporations are out to destroy you but and I, remember, I think they occasionally get a bit carried away with that line. I remember mm. the tinfoil hats only help them to scan your brain waves. They work <laughs> like antennas; they don't block. Yeah. Ah, oh, the truth comes out. The plain truth finally comes out. Oh God. <laughs> but um, no, just, I would. Yeah, I'd definitely recommend um, reading the article. Um, which again will be posted not only in the YouTube description but is in Twitch chat right now. Um, obviously, talks about very much so in terms of the whole military weapons thing, the capital class turrets. Um, as we know so far, there are two types of capital ship weapons. You have your anti ship artillery or ASA and your STS turrets or your ship to ships. Um, and they obviously make both. Um, mm. uh, though, one rather major thing that or probably their biggest product at least in terms of weapons is their uh, mounting devices Mm. they produce a universal mounting device which can interface with any known weapon system Mm. uh, both in terms of power and uh, controls you know it's it's funny you're talking about mounts this is something that I wanted to bring up in the, um, in the topic today uh, you know the Vanguard has that size 4 gimbaled mount and you can swap it out for a size 5 fixed mount the mm. fact is I've grown to like the Vanguard in a fixed gun position anyway I actually find it a lot easier with a ship of that speed um, because it is a boom and zoom fighter I think people are going to have to start getting used to fighting in cruise mode okay so I, mm. I'm most definitely in the future going to swap out the size 4 Revenant um, Deathstalker, that's it, the Deathstalker chain gun, and replace it for a much bigger kick-ass weapon, I think. So that's how I'm going to do it. I don't know about other people, but... So more along the lines of the Harbinger than the Warden? Yeah. See, what I find is that... Um, I think what's going to be interesting is to see how people load out their fighters because at the moment what I'm seeing is I find it a lot easier if I have a dog fighting craft like the Super Hornet to have more gimbaled weapons. So you'll have a lower tier of weapon, but gimbaled weapons and dog fighting I find is, goes really well together. But if you've got that whole boom and zoom type mentality, it's much better to have the bigger fixed weapons so that you're getting as much damage down as you possibly can. I find it's more of it's more about the alpha damage than yeah. the uh, sustained fire. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, I want my track IR back. Yeah. Hopefully that will be getting support soon enough, though. I haven't got a track IR, but I very much intend to invest in one. Um, I just wish I had the money for a rift. <laughs> the rift, yeah. Um, I don't know, my TV... I'm actually pl- uh, playing Star Citizen on my big 42-inch TV at the moment. Heresy! Uh, it's beautiful. It's not a monitor. You can have low... Uh, what should we call it? Response times. Yeah. Absolute it's okay, I, I haven't had any problems with it so far, actually. It's worked out really nicely. But how do you know those milliseconds won't make all the difference? Yeah, yeah I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's worked really nicely, and I think Track IR and this TV is going to work out quite nicely. I don't think I'm going to need Oculus. I may do in the future if it goes down in price, but um, I think Track IR is just the kind of best... Um, 
Oh, it's just a bit weird having to move your head around while still staring at the screen intently. Mm. No, it it's is, bit, actually. It, it, it actually is, once you do it, it's quite natural. Yeah, I've tried it several times, it's just I, I still... Because mm. mm. it's kind of like this, isn't it? You're kind of going like that. But the... Well, you're not moving that far. And it helps if you have three screens, because... Oh, but, yeah, yeah. You know... <laughs> Uh, but um, I don't have three sorry, screens. Sorry, sorry. Maybe I should. Maybe I should read it. It helps if you have three screens. Yeah, one, one, one. actually. Yeah. <laughs> actually. <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, I know you can uh, mess around with um, track IR sensitivity, can't you? So you can literally move like that, and your head will go Vroom! like that. So yeah. Good times. But I find tying it to my gimbals and getting that once you, once you figure that out and get that all squared away it works perfect you kick ass mm. yeah mm. it's just mm. that's one of the inherent appeals i find with the oculus the fact that as you look around the the actual screen follows your perception um i tell you what i haven't been able to play with my joystick in a while i got an x55 mm. and then i upgraded to windows 10 and it just, I don't know what it is, but there's something about the SciTech drivers that hates Windows 10 at the why, moment. Why do you have them? Don't use them. I have an X55 and I do not use the SciTech drivers. I just use the Windows one. This Windows drivers is there. Yes. Yeah, Windows no, and, they're, and upwards this, include is all the drivers. Yeah. Right. I, I basically, I basically, when I first got mine, I installed all my Satex software and drivers just to tweak out the uh, brightness of the lights on it. Yeah. Uninstalled them because it's kept the setting, and just went with the Windows drivers, and it worked perfect. Okay. I need to get the sorted out because it's. Uh, I have to say, I, I'm it not just doesn't work at the moment. The site tech just does not work, and it's it's horrible. I don't know what it is. It's the whole kind of drivers with Windows 10. It's just uh, it's annoying. So I'm gonna get that sorted out, and then um, I'm gonna play with my joysticks again, which I want to get proficient in because at the moment I'm so used to using keyboard and mouse. Um, but when the game actually comes out, I want to be using. And you 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 do want to be careful because you might go blind. Blind. You're playing with your joystick too much. Ah, <laughs> that's an old wife's uh, tale, is it? I swear that's what. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's complete BS, but never mind. I, it's rather amusing. The, the thing is, what? Uh, what? I can't see. It. The, the thing is, I always I need to make sure that the hotkeys are perfect every night. So I need to make sure that I'm playing with my joystick. All it's got to calibrate it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe lubricate the joint at the bottom. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Make sure it still twists and turns properly. Yes. Yeah. yeah, just to tighten up the spring a bit. <laughs> uh, no, I've got multiple springs with the X55, so you can choose your tautness. You can. You can. No, I, I tried using a joystick with uh, Star Citizen, but I don't know. With Space Sims, they just seem a bit odd. Joysticks, that is. It takes a bit. Of no, you're just to... a freak. <laughs> it's, it's just the keyboard and mouse is so much more intuitive. I um, it did take me a while to get used to joystick, but as soon as I got used to it, that was it. I just, it's just so much better. I find because you have so much more control over it. All the the little things, all the thrust as well. Thrust with keyboard and mouse is so fucking annoying. I will say this now, because you you gently tap W and you go <laughs> like that. Thru uh, with a with a joystick and thrust, you just gently push it, and that's it. Don't go I don't know. I view thing. people who use mouse and keyboard the same way I view consoles. <laughs> Peasants. Peasants. Yeah. Go out well, and buy a bloody I'd be joystick. Used to know I have a joystick right now. You're just poor. <laughs> no, I'm I'm currently fondling it. Don't worry. Oh, Jesus. Oh, really, really? I'm just so glad we don't have a camera on you. Yeah, yeah. you were just seeing it staring. <laughs> I don't want to know about you fondling your joystick. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you oh, do. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's even got a, a separate uh, throttle and everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm all up in this 20, 
20th century joystick business. What is it? What, what kind of joystick is it? Oh, God knows. Uh, uh, Thrustmaster. Oh, right. Yeah, that's not a bad one. Yeah, I w had wanted an X-52, but... Mm. You can still get them. Yeah, it's just... Nah, stop the money. Peasant. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> joking, that's messing with you. No, I, I spend all of my money on pipe tobacco. See, that's where you're going wrong, <laughs> you see. You're buying all this special pipe tobacco when you should be mm. saving for those beautiful JPEGs in space. But Praise all... our Lord and Saviour. They will all be burned. The burning of the JPEGs. The burning of the JPEGs. It? It's going to be he like... going to rock the gaming world when he brings Star Citizen down. It's going to be like Judgment be Day, isn't it? the end of Kickstarter. <laughs> Nobody will touch it ever again. No. The, J the, the JPEG apocalypse. I would wager JPEG it would Wars. even discredit the name of space simulators mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. We shall never again explore the depths of space in one of Derek Smart's space... I, won't, I wouldn't even call it a simulator. It, it's, it's more like one of those hollow decks from Star Trek. It's like being in space. Completely and utterly and just in reality. You, you turn on the game and you're there. See, I don't know why, well. but the other day I was torturing myself and watching... Star, um, Derek Smart doing interviews and I'm thinking there's so many contradictions here you only have to listen to one of his interviews where he does these so called facts and then the next interview he completely contradicts himself and it's hilarious it's, it's very good entertainment nonetheless oh it's it's entertaining yeah it's, it's hilarious to watch mm. if you want an actual decent interview though I'd had to game store. Uh, it's a German gaming magazine, I think. Yeah, I've watched some of their stuff. They do good interviews, actually. Also, uh, yeah. um, talking of... Well, in a recent it... article, they uh, had a rather nice picture of the Idris. Oh, I love seeing pictures. Uh, New pictures of the Idris is just... It's literally porn to me. Literally porn. I'll, have, I'll stick it on the Skype. Yeah. Make you happy, then. Um... No. They're fairly reliable, usually. But um, literally yeah, porn. Literally porn. Um. Anyway, literally as, porn. Literally. Um. Talking. No, no, no messing around with the joysticks there. No, this is full yeah. keyboard and mouse input. That is. Um, talking about um interviews, we recently got the Gillian Anderson, uh, behind yes. the scenes squadron for. Oh, that was such a good interview. I have to say between. Kingship in the background. I, I think the reason I enjoyed it so much was because we got to see so much of the mocap stuff. And we finally, finally saw a vandal in the cockpit. We just saw how big this thing is going to be. We saw the kingship, and we also saw what appeared to be the player flying a capital ship, um, which is amazing. Um, Gillian Anderson is an amazing actress. Um, she's... Uh, has a lot of talent, um, and I cannot wait to see her in. And Scotland there's a new X Files. And yes, I'm looking forward to that tonight, tomorrow night. Yep, same here. I'll what be channel is that it on? The internet. Um, it's being released in America. We'll probably have to wait about three months before we ah. get it. Here. Unless you use pirating. That's all right, because we get Game of Thrones before they do. Meh. And Sherlock. So. I prefer The Expanse now to Game of Thrones. What's yeah. The Expanse? The Expanse, check it out. It's about seven episodes in now, and it is fantastic. I'm going to have to check really, it out. Really, really good. What sort of show is it? Science fiction. Mm, is it, it horror? Is really is worth it. it. Politics? I'll, I'll, is it I'll, show you, I'll show you after we're done here. Okay. Yes. I think the problem with Game I'll, of Thrones... I'll show you a little bit after we're done. The problem with Game of Thrones is that you have to get past the second season. The first season's amazing, and then you have to get past the second one. The second one is a bit of a crawl, and fortunately enough, I I started watching uh, Game of Thrones, 
um, when it was on its sixth season, I think. And uh, so I was able oh, to just... Holy crap, you Yeah. I was very behind, but I was just able to steam watch it all through. I was just plow through mm. it. Uh, I must admit, I got bored up to about halfway through the first season and dropped really? it. Really? The first yeah. season is amazing, um, but it's the second think... one which is di- uh, difficult to get past, and then all the others after that are just great. So I just got... Have... Mm. I just find it uses a lot of nudity and death repeatedly in that. No, I would say Sometimes it's... I think it aims to shock the audience too much, and it focuses less on the story. There's a lot of believe it or not, believe door. it or not, that kind of that kind of goes off a bit as it goes on. Yeah, they mm. don't. They don't. These days, it it you get a little bit error now, but nowhere near like you did in the first season. The, yeah, that must admit that was a lot of nudity and a lot of sex scenes and all that kind of stuff in the first season. Wasn't now it's things. now it's it, very it much story and political now. Mm. So most of it's just copying uh, Henry the Eighth, though. <laughs> Uh, it has bits of it in it, but it's a, I must, it's a very original story, I must mm. say. It's a weird mix of Roman and Middle Ages Britain. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, anyway, it's, how long have we been streaming for? We've kind of been streaming for 45 minutes. That's pretty good, people. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, I must apologise, uh, we were running a bit late today, guys. Um, that was simply due to the fact that my housemates decided they were going to start messing around with the Home Hub um, at, I think, quarter two, quarter to nine. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, we're now going to move on to our next topic, which is the ship of the week. Um, yeah, there we go. We finally got it. Uh, the ship of the week this week is the Hull E, um, which I believe is the big um, commercial type of. Uh, it's it has a ton of roles. Um, from what I've seen, there's so many different variants of the Hull, uh, the Hull E that there's just there's too much, too much. Oh, damn it. Um, but no, the Hull E is uh, primarily a kind of space trucking ship. Um, so it's going to be used for transporting uh, oils, gases, minerals, materials, ships, even. Uh, it's a cargo ship. So if you guys are interested in being kind of a space trucker and having this huge bloody ship that uh, can carry pretty much anything, then this is the one for you. Please uh, note, it's no longer for sale. Yeah, it's no longer for sale. It most probably will be in another anniversary sale as, or whatever. Just keep your eyes out. Um, just let you know, RSI does not sponsor or condone us whatsoever um, uh, with um, the ship sales. And also, bear, keep in mind that ship stats are... Um, <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. Ship stats are available to change, so take everything we say with a pinch of salt. I'm sure in the future it will be changed, just like every other ship is. So, um, let's start talking about it. Uh, Monty, do you want to talk about the engines? Um, they're fucking massive. They are. <laughs> Um, it has ten engines. Uh, currently, I'm not sure whether these are old uh, style stats or not, but they're currently uh, size 13s. Yes. Which, as far as I know, is probably the biggest engines we've seen so far. Mm. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think... No, uh, I think the, you're right. Yeah. I think with maybe... I'm just going to check the Javelin and the Idris, but... I can't think of any other ship which has even vaguely comparable engines for us. Nope, apparently the uh, TR-7's on the Javelin Destroyer. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And that's I've... the only vaguely comparable ship we have. Well, the Holly has bloody huge engines, but I guess I can understand why that is, seeing as the Holly is going to be... have a lot of stuff on board. 
Um, yeah, I I think because it's relatively speaking at spaceships compared to other universes, it's also quite small mm. compared to say the 40k universe or things like that. So I think they're going for more speed over size. It's it's a, it's a space truck, isn't it? So yeah. a lot of power under the engine, not much maneuverability. Um, yeah. Hooch, do you want to talk about its power plant? Well, as the power plant says, coming soon, I can't. <laughs> yeah, to me. But what do you think the size is going to be of the power well, plant? Well, it's going to have to have enough power to drive those... 10 thir- you know size 13 engines shields it's got i don't know if this is a typo or not but a size three two size three turrets and six size four gimbal oh sorry these gimbals not not the side the, the you know so it, it's got to have a bit of power to it um yeah i mean it, it, it's it's what it says on the tin it's a it's a it's it's a freighter. It's you know. It's I I don't know really where you go from there. It's it's basically a container ship. Mm. 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 Yeah. A, a large container ship. I think people lots of be... goods just to fill up the damn thing. You're gonna have to have really 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 good reason because I imagine the running costs on it are gonna be ridiculous. Oh yeah, yeah. But the profit costs. God. Yeah. You you if you're gonna go somewhere with this ship, you need to fill it. Mm. 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 I think, though, on one other note, the I think people will be unpleasantly surprised by the weapons, because from well, what the weapons, we, you know, they're all right. Cargo ship, isn't it? I guess. So. I think that, and all of the times we've heard Chris Roberts talk about it, he's been going on about having an adequate escort. Well, that's, so that could be a. That's the point, isn't it, with these big trawlers? Um, uh, especially with kind of cargo organizations this is why you've got organizations which are security organizations which provide escorts um, and that kind of thing for money because the whole point is is I don't they're not going to make a cargo ship with a ton of weapons on or a ton of amazing weapons on because that's just not the point you want to have as much space for cargo as you can and then you just you buy escorts, um, and sort of like the UAE Naval Reserves. Yes, yes. They do, they uh, do a I, job I, like I hear yes. a shameless we plug do. might be coming yes. now. We do shameless plug. We do escorts. We have Idris. for you, and if you like hiring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, we have six Idris and two Javelin destroyers on hand to help you with your shipping needs, and a buttload of fighters. Yeah, mm. I don't think we're going to be giving capital ships as escorts. That's kind of our own operations. But yes, fighter wings um, are, are very much available. The Ark Royal is negotiable in a, a separate capacity for profitable ventures. Monty, you have to give a percentage of these profits back to the UENR. This is also negotiable depending on... <laughs> <laughs> but yes... Shameless plug, um, the UENR does wonderful offer security. Yes, uh, it is a wonderful organization. I, I, I really think we're going to have to rename the Ark Royal to Leroy Jenkins. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Leroy! What, so I can just charge it into Vandal screaming Leroy? Yeah! yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I was also thinking of naming it the Smart because <laughs> it doesn't have that many smart um, decisions on board no, no, I just felt the irony would be suitable Oh yeah, much like everybody's favourite overlord of the gaming community oh yes um, anyway yes, anyway we finished our shameless plugging shameless plugging uh, as, as we, well the next part I was going to talk about actually was the gimbal mounts um, from what we can see here we have we Two have size eight. three and six times fours. Yes. Um, Unless that's a typo. It makes sense that it's a typo and they're all size fours. I eight don't know. gimbal I... mounts overall. Um, I've got a feeling that they're not going to be that big. Um, just because... Don't it would... worry, it's just indigestion. Yeah. 
Um, but yes, obviously, as we said, all stats do come with a pinch of salt. I generally don't believe they're going to be that big of, um, of gimbal mounts um, because it just takes up too much room um, and that just doesn't fit in. I mean, I mean, the Holy's a big freaking ship, but it's just a waste of space, I think. I don't know. I think if you were to use energy weapons, you wouldn't incur quite so much space issues. Yeah, but then the power plant has to work all that harder, doesn't it? Well, if you're just coasting along, then it's not going to be quite such an issue. Um, I generally think the size 4 mounts would be put down to size 3s, and the size 3s would be put yeah. down to size 2s. It would make more sense, because the Idris is currently sitting on size 5 turrets. Yeah. And I don't think a transport ship is going no. to be competitive in that level. No. Well, it's not meant to fight, is it? It's a cargo no, ship. It's um, just supposed to be a a, veil, a vague threat. Mm, mm. Any serious pirate would just be able to blast through that. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. You I mean, mean it's, it, it's, it's not going to be useful as a pocket carrier? Mm. No! <gasps> Everything needs to be pocket carrier. The, the, the thing is, though, like, I guarantee people are like, it can carry ships, that means it's a it's pocket it's carrier? A pocket carrier. <laughs> I have to say, I think CIG should just give up at this point and basically release a giant container which can carry five <laughs> ships, has no guns, and an engine strapped to the back. It's a pocket carrier! <laughs> and it would just get these people to stop. I would like another fighter bit in my Idris. <laughs> if, how, how many ships does the Idris hold? Is it three? Or We're not four? entirely sure. It's three or four. It's not that much, but still... It's enough, no. I guess. But um, is it? Well, I'm thinking maybe three to four gladiuses and maybe two vanguards. Just slap the vanguards on the sides. No, just o on the actual <laughs> tower, you park the vanguard on top of the tower. All right. <laughs> well, there's plenty of flat deck in front of the bridge, so mm -hmm. I'm sure that would work as long as it's got magnetic connectors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As they say, if it fits, it sits. Yeah, we can send up a butler with a nice set of cucumber sandwiches and tea. Oh, yeah. I'm going to magnetically grapple to the back of the bridge, and then when they dump the trash, I'm just going to disconnect and float away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a totally original idea, by the way. I just came up with that all on my own. Yes, no knockoffs there. Well done. These and other smart tactics can be obtained from the UENR. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see the tactics page. There's going to there's be normal UENR tactics, then there's going to be... Monty tactics. No, there's going to be the UEES Leroy tactics. <laughs> Do you feel your ship is under-armoured? <laughs> if so, glue redeemers to it. <laughs> Step one, fly in. Step two, shoot things. Step three, question mark. Step four, <laughs> yeah. profit. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Mm. There we go. Back to weapons. Yes, back to weapons. Um, now, I, I wonder if they're going to allow... I mean, I don't know at this phase, but... You know, missile boxes. Multiple missile launchers. I don't see why not. Um... Yeah. You know, I, if you put them you in the size four slot, I think you be quite a lot of missiles. Yeah, I mean, if I was to, for sake of argument, with an address, it would be quite an interesting experiment to replace all of the turrets with dumb fire missile launchers. Oh no, no, we're just talking about the whole E using it. Oh, I, I thought we'd. Yeah. Sort of, oh, no. I. No, no, no. Well, I mean, I, the way I think about it is that. A missile box minimum is going to be size four, and as I as I've said, I don't think there's going to be any uh, size fours on the Holly. No, I think the Harbinger has dumb fire missile launchers in its turret. Yeah, but that's a size um, four turret. Is it? Yeah. I shall investigate. And um, how many does it have? I could be wrong. Um, I think it has about ten or so missiles in it. Ten. So yeah, if you, if that's all right, let's say let's say that's right, and it's size four, yeah. ten missiles. Oh, yeah. yeah, You put you put you got two times at size four, 
Mm. So that's 20 missiles times four. Mm. You got 80 missiles there. It's a lot of missiles. And seeing as there's going to be... And then if you have an escort as well... And seeing as... Man, you're going to be able to get... two. Pardon, sorry? Uh, it's a size two turret. Ah, right, okay. All oh, right. And how many is there in a size two turret? How many missiles? Um, I I would tell you that the page isn't loading particularly well. Okay. Ah. Uh, so I, you can get size two missile boxes then. Fair enough. So yeah, so, I mean, you know, what's a size four missile box look like? You know. Yeah. Yeah, we just don't know these things. Um, I mean, there's only one ship at the moment that has a missile box. Uh, well, on on it. Which is the Harbinger at the moment, from what I can see. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the thing on the no, nose of the Idris the is. The Mustang... I think that's a Mustang Delta. Mustang yeah. Delta. Yeah, that has missile a rocket. Boxes. Rocket bots, yeah. they're rockets, not missiles. Mm. Mm. And I think the thing on the front of the Idris is a torpedo launcher rather than missiles. Is it? I thought that was the massive ass rail gun, wasn't it? Uh, no, that's suspended just underneath the front of the ship. It's the weird. Oh, are you talking bit. about the big turret on top? Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a big yeah. turret right on the front, <coughs> and then behind that, there's a sort of Y shaped turret, but that fires torpedoes, I think. Right. Um. So it has a big ship to ship turret. I think it's just a ship to ship nose. turret, mate. I think that's what what it is. I think it's generally just well, a no, ship to ship turret. It's, it's got a ship to ship turret. Yeah, on if the front at... near the rail gun, yeah? No, you've got a, a, you've got a, a fixed rail gun on the bottom of yeah. the nose of the address. Yeah, and then above and on it. On the top of the row nose, you have the ship to ship turret. And then behind that, you have a sort of Y-shaped, odd-looking thing, which is a torpedo launcher. That's a bit further back behind the ship-to-ship -ship turret. Okay, yeah, so you've got... I'm looking at a picture now, you've got... Obviously, as you said, the railgun on the bottom. Then on the very yep. front of the nose at the top, that is the ship-to-ship -ship gun, I think. Yes, that's the one. That's and the ship to ship. And then the one behind, behind that, it, yeah, it's torpedo launches. The Y shape. Yeah. Yeah. With a nice little room below it full of torpedoes. Oh, yes. And boys and girls, if you're ever aiming to destroy an Idris, aim either there. aim just below that or go for the big circle on the back, which is probably the emergency reactor expulsion system. That's if you can okay. pierce the shields. First. So, <laughs> I, I I say that running one of these hull E's is going to be an organization size event. Oh yeah, uh, yes. Gotcha. Uh, it, it's not going to be a one guy. Oh yeah, I bought this, but I, I'm going to just run this. There will be money. people who do it. Well, they'll <laughs> some, try it. They'll some, try it. Somehow there will be some people that they they will try it. They, there oh, there will be people who will try. Oh yeah, of course they're going to. Die horrendously. Yeah, I don't know. But... You'll probably have these pro players that manage it, but mm. I um I need to ask our logistics division if we have hollies because I'm sure we do. I think um, there are several. Yeah. Make so I mean, just logistics. to just to make it worthwhile to run, you got to fill it. No, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Which means you have to have enough cargo to move, which is an astounding amount of cargo. Especially on the Holly. Have you seen yeah. how much cargo that thing exactly. can hold? It says it's here, ridiculous. I mean, obviously these are still very early ship stats, so don't take it with a pinch of salt, but it says it can hold uh, 98,304, which I take is tons of um, Well, the... the... Of cargo capacity. Yeah, the Idris carries 1,720, and the Javelin carries 5,400, and they're the biggest ships out there. So the Hull E can t haul a ton. I mean, it can haul a metric shit, shit ton. A metric shit ton of stuff. Yeah. 
So you got to um, and you got to pay for fuel, you got to pay for crew, you got to pay for your escort and oh. all the fuel involved, which means that that's, you've got to make this awesome. worth your while to run this. That's oh, one yeah. interesting point in the Holly. It has a very small crew for its size. Oh yeah, persons. but you still got to pay them. I'm I'm just um, including that as cost. I'm not saying there's a lot. I'm just saying that there is a crew there, you know. Um, and, and it's got to be worth like every it's got to be worth everybody's while to run this thing. Yeah. I mean, just from the current stats, the Idris has twice the crew capacity as or mm. requirements as the E does. Uh, Javelin doesn't have a number, unfortunately. Mm. Just remember as well, guys, is that there's two types of fuel in the game. You've got your normal fuel, and then you've got your quantum fuel. And then mm. you're most likely also going to have fuel to do with... Um, mining and stuff like that. So if you're... Ha if if you are part of an organization that's going out and you're collecting minerals, you're going to have to have mining ships with you, you're going to have to have the holly, and then you're going to have to have escorts. So yep. it's going to cost a bit, but then the profits you're going to make from the amount of cargo you get is going Should to be, be good. so worth it. Now, as far as quantum fuels are concerned, my, my, you know, the current rumor is, is that you just use Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> it does give you wings it unless does. you're in America in which case you get sued for saying yeah. it and you remove it yes, so yes because somebody is absolutely <laughs> dumb enough to drink it and then jump off of somebody no, there, um, I think that's, that's more Darwinism in action there was a guy who sued in America wasn't there and won because Red yeah, Bull didn't yeah. give him wings all the red but the thing and is... then everybody jumped in on it and he only ended up with five dollars or something <laughs> No, he won quite a bit, I think, and then everyone else jumped in and then tried to get the money. But the fact is, um, because he got them under false advertising, he won. Um, but that's just the justice system for you, isn't it, really? Um, but yeah, anyway, yes, moving on. Courts, not the justice system. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, moving on. Anyway, uh, power plant, uh, we've gone past that. Gimbal mounts, we've done that. Shield. Um... I'm thinking quite a hefty big shield, especially if you've got that much worth of cargo on there. You're going to want a pretty hefty fucking shield on there. It, it must might... be made by the same people as the power plant. I think hmm. the shielding it's, might it's a coming be... coming soon. Kruger thing. It's got to be a Kruger. I don't no, know. It's, it's coming soon. Yeah, but I've got a feeling it's probably a Kruger. Hmm. <laughs> It's just I think the shielding will be most concentrated around the engine plant and the crew quarter section at the front. I think it will be thinner in the cargo bay. Yeah. That could just be entirely wrong, but given the size of it, I think you'd require one hell of a power plant to actually make an effective shield all over that. Without going into sort of capital ship sized... Though it is so big, it might well have capital ship size shield generators. Um, I if I were the captain of a holly, the first yar. thing yar the first thing I would do um, is make sure that I have a bigger shield. Mm. Um, Gonna need a bigger shield. Oh yeah. Otherwise, those pirates will be after surprise butt sex. Oh yes. Surprise butt sex. Um So additional equipment we don't actually have any think for that yet. Um I think a jump engine will probably be standard with this, so Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, the the variants. Um, so you've got your whole B and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure whole C's and all that kind of are thing. Are they variants well. though? I mean, they are entirely different ships. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's more just. I would say this was a line. They're not variants. Yeah, but I think the whole. A, B, C, uh, D actually has a military variant to its name. Which could be interesting uh, seeing how that's upgunned, up armoured, etc. And how much of a cargo cost that will come to it. 
Mm. Um, sorry guys, carry on talking a minute. I just need to sort one thing out and then I'll be back with you. Alright. Okay. So, Moose, how would you take out a holly? I don't know, Moose isn't here. Good point, I'm senile. Are you Hooch? Yeah. Hooch. <laughs> how would you take out a holly then? I would have I would have somebody in the crew beforehand to sabotage it. At a pointed location. And if you had, if you were just in a ship and you were floating around, wanting to steal some things, how would you? Do I wouldn't it then? go after. I wouldn't go after a whole D. Not not in them circumstances. There's no point. It should be well protected. And it, it could be Mr. Noobly on his first run. There's always well, he, he's going to die anyways. I don't need to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, it's just one of them things. It's You can't really, uh, you, yeah, you, you can't run one of these things without a whole operation behind it. It's, if, if you go anywhere... You, you're gonna get jumped, and you can't protect it. It's it's too big. Yes, this is when I feel we should throw in another shameless plug for the UE and all. Well, yeah, it's w what we're sort of there for, you know. Mm, that's and bringing home the proverbial and literal bacon. Yeah, it's that is it's one of the main things. Mm. It's, it's, it's a good looking ship. It's not bad. It looks r suitably rugged. Yeah. No. Uh, as you mentioned Utilitarian. Before, yes, that's probably the right term. Mm. But as you mentioned before, with having somebody infiltrate your crew, that's one of the things I'm most paranoid about. Well, that's why you got to make sure you know the people in your crew. Mm. You know, if... If, if you're trying to, you know, that's where the reputation system comes in as well. Yeah, it'll just be and, interesting to see how that reacts when people just sort of mill around on whole bees or something until they've got a high reputation because they've done several small but jobs and, as well. And it's always a danger, you know, and that's, that's a danger in real life. I mean, you got to face it. You cannot, you, you know, that that's just life. You can't trust everybody. Yeah, you gotta. At, at some point, you got to just go with it until you know it could happen. It may, it may not. You don't know. Mm. You know, you can't control every situation. It's just life does not work out like that. Mm. Or else you never get anything done. Or use thermonuclear weapons. <laughs> Hello guys. You still not <laughs> I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to um, respond to a email because um, Yahoo decided not to send an email that was quite important yesterday. So I had to resend that, and hopefully it's we're all okay now. Uh, so well, uh, what were we talking about? Where did we leave off? Trusting your crew. Mm. Trusting your crew. Um, mm. Very important. Very important, I think. Um, I think there are going to be people in the verse that... Um, are... well, I don't think I know. Yeah. <laughs> there are going to be people in the verse <laughs> that are going to fuck everything up. I can promise you that. Um, that's yeah. what they're going to do. Well, it's just like real life, you know. There are people that always do it. Mm -hmm. If somebody can see a way to do it, they're gonna do it. Mm. But you can't live your life as if everybody's going to do it. Mm. At some point, you just have to go. Well, let's see what happens and take a little risk. Yeah. Mm. Um. One of the things that. I think you're going to have to look out for one uh, the most is um, 
the newbies, isn't it? Because you're always going to get new people mm. coming into your organization. But I think that's why you put them through things such as basic training and everything first. Um, but you wouldn't allow a new you wouldn't allow a newbie to crew on a whole E. No. No. It, it that that would just be silly. The reputation system that they're designing for the game is really kind of good idea. You know, mm. people who play longer are not going to want to blow that reputation. You will have a few people who who will have alt characters mm. who they're going to build up that reputation with, but that's going to be a time-consuming affair. Mm. They're going to put a lot into doing that just mm. for something like this. Mm. Mm. I have to say, I think so, I'll be one of these paranoid captains walking around constantly in orc armor with a crossbow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, uh, as you said, I think the reputation system is done in such a way that um, pl players rate each other as well, which I think is really good. So if you've got someone who scammed you uh, before on something like a, a deal or something, they'll leave a reply saying, this guy scammed me, and then that will go on your, your character pretty much forever. Mm. So you're always going to have that kind of... Um, I know there are going to be people like goons and stuff like that, which are just going to purposely just make it so that they go into these orgs and they just fuck shit up, because that's what they do. But um, the goons will be found out very quickly, and uh, yeah. I think that's why I like Star Citizen, is because unlike EVE Online... I think goons are going to be quite manageable in this game, so. Yeah, uh, never. I I never one hundred percent say that. You know. Yeah. They, they find those cracks. Are pretty smart ways. Yeah, they find cracks. Mm. Yeah. They're not gonna. You know. They'll they'll find ways, but. You know. Hopefully yeah. they have to work hard at it. You know. Hmm. Because that makes it more involved with the game. So you know. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, re re as long as reputation is something that's hard to build. Yeah. Because if it's too easy to build, yeah, you're going to have lots of people doing You'll it. You'll just have but circle if, jerks of. Yeah. People reputation. just building up reputation just to do this. But if it's yeah. really actually hard to build, mm. people are going to, you know, well. You know, do I really want to blow this character on this one? You know, mm. this has spent a lot of time building this character up to do these things, you know. Mm. You know, and then there's also the aspect of you know the person. Mm. You know, it's it, it's easier when you know somebody and been talking to them for a while, you know. You, you know pretty much they're on the same wavelength as you, so they're not going to do it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know. I think that's why it was so important and I think that's why they probably did it, releasing organisations so early in development, um, creating organisations, so that people could start to mix before the game had officially come out and people could start to create these alliances um, because, you know um, the sooner it happens uh, the closer these people will become in terms of when they're going to actually play the game, th you know, they're going to have each other's backs. I think it's also dependent on the size of the guild. Yeah. When you get to these really big guilds, they'll try and organise things, but you're going to find 50% of the players are goons or something. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, Imperium's, Imperium's got a lot of micromanaging to do, hasn't it, then? In terms of <laughs> freaking organisation size, because that is ridiculous. So. Yeah. I, when you're having thousands of members then you'll you're gonna struggle because you're not gonna be able to trust half the players most of them you'll have never spoken to uh, yeah mm. I wouldn't be so keen on being majorly involved in such a large guild see I actually think that the smaller little guilds are actually gonna do like, our kind of size guild is going to do very well in the verse, I think. I think any less, you kind of struggle a bit. Any more, you're kind of bordering on the line of, uh, are we going to be able to trust this particular person that yeah, we're relying we've... on now 
to do this. We've got the numbers to military, in a military fashion, dominate an instance. Mm. But we're not at the scale where we're leaving dozens of fighters around the place for no other reason than we can't control them properly. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, so, um, crew. I think um, when it comes especially to capital ship stuff, um, you're going to want to have your most trusted on there because it's, it's just such a valuable bit of kit. Um, which is yeah. why I'm glad. too much money involved. Gotcha. Too much money. Too much. Too much effort. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is why I have if... you two around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the javelins, especially. Um, oh, those things are going to be hellish. Come on. They come completely stripped of of everything, yeah. um, a bear the minor stuff. Um, so. I, I'm sure it probably doesn't even come with a power plant or anything like that. Um, so I think you... it's got enough stuff to run, uh, but I think it's things like the radar is going to be a down heavily downgraded. The guns are going to be sort of size three or four at most. I don't They're even think they have anywhere. guns on them. Like they come completely stripped. You have to find everything. The power plant's going to be ten gerbils on wheels. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't yeah. think it'll be quite that bad, but I think it's going to be heavily strict compared to a military javelin. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. I think it'll still function as a ship, but it's not going to be effective. You're not going to want to take it out. Like, no. at all. It's um, not going to be military effect. Military effect. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But again, this all comes down to the organisation of when you're building a javelin together, because that's essentially what you're doing. You're building it from the ground up. Um, you're mm. going to need to involve everyone. You're going to need your logistics. You're going to need the people in the warfare areas to protect the people in the logistics. And then you're going to need your ground forces to make sure that nobody gets on board the javelin. It's such a massive cooperation involved, um, I think, so it's really going to gel make or break an organization, think, I think. Well, think about it this way. They talked at one point about having a bangle out there somewhere that had been damaged that mm. could be found by an organization. Yeah. Then mm. tried to get back on its way. Think mm. about how that's going to run, you know? It's... Yeah, yeah. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that the bigger organizations are going to find the bangles first, but it's whether they can put... Um, we're It'll... just going to have squabbles over who controls it and yeah. who does what and yeah. who provides materials. And... I, I guarantee the bigger organisations are the ones that are going to find the shiniest things first, but it's the distribution of the shiniest things which I think they're going to struggle with the most. Yeah. Um... I think our sort of size guild, the most we'll want to aim for is something like a Pegasus uh, escort carrier. Mm. It's going to be big enough to carry a majority of the guild's fighters, but it's not going to be so large that everybody's going to insta-kill it on sight. Yeah. Through je jealousy of the fact we've owned one as such. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's ways we would be able to get our hands on a Bengal. Um, and I mean, why the hell wouldn't we want to? Um, because we don't have the crew. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it would be very useful in terms of deep space operations, just being able to have the ability to land large amounts of fighter craft. Well, I think the Pegasus would... Uh, that's going to carry something in the region of 30 to 40 fighters, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah but the Bengal can carry, uh, I think, probably 100. Or maybe even Yeah, more. but we also have things like the Idris and the Javelin in the guild. So yeah. we'd be able to make a nice little fleet around the Pegasus, whereas if we had a Bengal, we wouldn't have the crew to physically operate a capital ship escort. Mm. You would have to have hundreds of members. Yeah. And also because of the persistence of these craft, you really need a crew 24-7. Yeah, 24-hour crew. Um, which isn't going to be so manageable. Which And it's um, such a large ship, it's going to be easy to find. Just an organisation announcement as well. Um, we are still currently looking for 24-7 craft on our capital ship. Um, so if you're in places like Australia, Asia, um, these kind of places, then you're very 
very much needed. Um, English the... does help. English does help. Um, yeah, but, um, I'm Google sure. Google Translate can be slow and um, fruity in its translations. Yeah. But I'm sure if you're listening to this podcast, it's not a concern to yeah, you. Yeah, I'm sure it's probably not. Um, but yes, 24-7 crew is very much appreciated. And I'm sure there will be times where we will be doing special live streams um, and we'll be doing 24-hour live streams, that kind of thing. Um, so that's something to look forward to in the actual game. Um, let's take a look. We've been going for one hour, 30 minutes. Um, is there anything else you guys want to talk about in particular? Um... Not really. I mean, I could put in a shameless plug for if you're free and you want a, an interesting position upon the HMS Ark Royal, please apply. I love how he please. doesn't state what position. It's just interesting position. <laughs> there are many positions to fill. Everything from gunnery officers to people you, buggering around. If If you want to... If you want to sit in a position where the commander is standing behind you with a gun to your head for 24 hours a day, then yeah. <laughs> I'm nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just don't, just for God's sake, don't own a redeemer. Um, yeah. And you'll be okay. Um, that, is, that is a clear <laughs> requirement. If in your uh, past service history you have flown in redeemers, you will be airlocked. Now I have to buy a damn re redeemer. I used to have a redeemer, um, but I upgraded it to a vanguard, so I think I've been forgiven. Um, mm. Mm. Oh, the naivety! I, I, can, <laughs> I can I can airlock you if you like to be airlocked. No, it's it's fine. Um, I'd like to not be airlocked. I think throughout my entire career, that's kind of what I'm I'm planning on. Really, I well, I, I plan to have quite interest... a prestigious. Uh, career without the Idris airlocking. Does actually, have a brig. Interestingly, it does. Um, but I'll I think to find out if you can lock people in. You it. have to have good reason to brig someone. I think. I don't think you can brig an officer just because they had a redeemer at one point. Because I think the higher ups might start to question your sanity. I think they might be like, he, he brigged an officer for once owning a redeemer. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something wrong here. <laughs> let me get this. Let me get this right. Start to question his sanity. Yeah. Yeah, I would already be questioning it, frankly. Yeah, they, oh, no, they, I think they're already. Uh, they already are. I think Hawk or and Moose and Rooster and Lucas Abbott. I think is also questioning your sanity very much. I've not said anything particularly zoned to Lucas Abbott. Yeah, um, that's another guy. Uh, I've I've been. Struggling I introduced to him to the guild. Did you? Yeah, we had oh, a nice. delightful discussion uh, about the fact that we both missed the Idris sale. Oh, and, right. And uh, he very nicely told me that it had in fact appeared forty minutes late for some reason. We all hmm. thought we'd missed it for some reason. Uh, he right. checked at the right time, and uh, yeah. We both nice. ended up with Idris's out of it. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, but I, I'm sure we've all questioned your sanity at one point. But I think I think Monty's at that kind of position in the organisation now where everyone kind of accepts he's the oddball. He's like, yeah, he's that's Monty. That's a Monty thing to do or say, I think. So we've got to that point now. It gives a guild Still character. Yeah. Still say Leroy Jenkins sounds better than Ark Royal. Yeah. Mm, but the Ark Royal has weight of history behind it. It did. I, was it the Ark Royal that helped take the Bismarck? Um. Yes. I think. I'm going to have to research this again. Um. Uh, was it the. No, it was the War Spite, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, no, no, that was a battleship. Yeah, um, it was the Ark Royal. It was. Okay. Yeah, it was a swordfish, and the Ark Royal crippled it. Never mind. Back to. Uh... Yes. Yes. Um, but yes, um, as I said, as I'm going to say every stream, the uh, UENR is always looking 
for abled body people. If you're interested in a military simulation organization that runs with proper military tactics and training, but is full of lovely, quirky people like ourselves, then make mm-hmm. sure to apply on the RSI site and the Facebook site. As usual, I will leave links to all of these down in the YouTube um, and stuff. Um, in it, bruv. In it, bruv. Ting. Christopher Day. Fam. Fam. Lieutenant Hooch, I have to ask you a question. Mm. When you used to live in England, did you ever pick up any chav tendencies? Tendencies, no. No. Slang. Oh, I know what you're talking I know exactly what you're talking about. Bruv Ting. No, Oh God! <laughs> what what are his rings yeah. called? Uh, 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 sovereign. Uh, oh, you mean the signet rings? Signet. Yeah, those stupid ones they get from Argos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. God. Fucking one pound rings and stuff like that. Look, yeah. look. Okay, I I lived within fifteen miles of Thetford. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, it's not as bad as Bridgewater. It's like or the Luton. home of the chat. Yeah. No, that re- unfortunately goes to Bridgewater. That That well, is a yeah, magical but... land of inbreeding <laughs> and genetic and drift. General chavness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mijuli. <laughs> Mijuli. <laughs> Mijuli. Ali G. Oh He's amazing. Yeah. That's a brilliant film, that was. I fucking love it. Um, so, let's take a look at, at this. Actually, we need to discuss one other thing. Um, oh, God, what have you done to the script, Monty? What have you done? Um, anyway, for added... Um, for added Next week, we need a Ship of the Week, and this time it is a military version. Uh, Hooch, it is your turn to choose the ship for next da, week. Da, 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 da. You should feel honoured, Hooch. I'm going to say... Right, so we've we, been hitting around a multi-crude a lot, so let's go with, like... Uh, Gladiator. Your have we done that one? Uh, have we? I don't, I don't think... think we have. We haven't. No, I don't. I don't think we've done the Gladiator. No. Okay. So next week will be the Gladiator, um, which is the ship of the week next week. Um, thank you very much for tuning into this uh, podcast, the Reservist. Um, this afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next week on the Reservist Podcast, where Navy talks every Saturday at 2100 GMT. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. May the flying spaghetti monster guide you in your travels. Exactly. Ramen. Ramen. Try to keep up. Indeed.